Welcome back guys. So this was my Cobb Access Tuner uh, series of guides or uh, documentation on, on starting yourself on tuning. Uh, this will be the next next step but first step of doing the actual tuning or adjusting of the car. And to do that we're going to start with the MAF sensor. Um, in my case it is sitting here on top of my uh, my intercooler. Let me go ahead and grab the camera, give you a quick idea of what you're seeing. So this is the map sensor here. Um, bring out view. This is my intake system. This is an ETS uh, cold air intake that goes all the way down to right here in the bumper. Or so, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this real quick. Nothing too special about it. There's usually just two screws in here that are pretty tight. You want to be careful with unscrewing them. There's a reason why I'm taking this off. I want to kind of show you guys what this guy is about before we actually get to the tuning. It would be nice to understand what this means so that when you're tuning, you can apply the logic behind it. So one screw, two screws. And eventually, once you get to speed density, um, which I actually just finally finished myself, once you get the speed density, you don't actually need this guy anymore. So there's an O-ring on it, so you want to be careful about popping it out. So this is what it is. Turn this camera a little bit. This guy right here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special. Um, you're going to have two basic functions of this. You're going to have a uh, um, the actual map sensor that's reading the, the um, number, and then you're going to have a temperature sensor. I'm not exactly sure which is which. I'm assuming this little guy here by my pinky, you can kind of see that little uh, diode or whatever you want to call it. That, that reads the temperature, I'm assuming. I don't know, one of the two. But this is the function. This is what gets dirty a lot of times. Um, so you can actually use some uh, math cleaner. Let me grab that real quick. This stuff right here. This is some um, mass airflow cleaner. This stuff is uh, specific to cleaning this guy. This and this are the only two things that should go together. I mean, you can use this for whatever else you want, I guess. But this guy um, is what you should use to only clean this guy here. Um, the reason being is that... Uh, it's safe on plastic, it leaves no residue, and it evaporates pretty quick. So this is specifically, CRC makes it, but it doesn't matter who you get, as long as it's mass airflow cleaner. So, that's what this guy does. Like I said, the function behind it is simple. It reads the air coming in and out based on the voltage that it's sending it. So, um, that's something to, to think about when you're actually doing the tuning and you're, you're trying to make adjustments. When you gotta increase your your grams per second of air, you're actually telling the car that there's more air coming in, which is going to add more fuel. So that's one thing to think about. So we'll pop this guy back in. I actually need to buy or make a block off plate since I don't even need this anymore. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. If I leave it in, it doesn't affect me. And I guess if I ever have to go back to a MAF sensor, it's there and ready to be used. Um, so that works. So what I'll do is I'll get this put back in and we'll jump over to the computer and uh, we'll take a look at uh, doing some, some math stuff. All right, so here we are again at the computer. Um, we're gonna go over how to take care of the math scaling on the software side. I just wanted to show you quickly what the car looked like um, and how the math sensors worked and what you can expect and how to keep it clean. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over preparing your car, um, and that's kind of what we just did. Uh, you're gonna also make sure that uh, you got some gas in the car, um, tire pressure, all the basics, make sure that stuff's good, because you're going to put about 30 minutes to an hour driving on the car, so make sure you have a nice route plan that varies um, how you drive, varies the load. Uh, I would say do not drive um, do not drive like uh, on the highway yet, I mean that's something you can do like on your secondary time when you go out and do the skilling again, so stick to the main city driving, you know, 45 and 50 mile an hour. Um, try to find places where you're going to stop and go in traffic a lot. I know that sucks, but uh, we want to get the, the most log data that we can at different gears, different RPMs, uh, just so we can uh, get the, the different voltages hit with the mass scaling. Um, 
the biggest thing you want to do here is don't accelerate fast. You know, when you hit that throttle, just kind of put a lay into it slowly. No fast throttle responses, no boost, because we're not worried about that. That's all open loop stuff. And uh, that's pretty much the basics. Just just take it easy, go for a nice cruise, and, and you'll be good. So looking at the the map, let's let's get everything set up to do this process, right? So we have Axis Tuner loaded up. Um, it's hooked up to your car. You're ready to go driving. Um, what do you need to log? So let's go here and check out the configure options. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck all so we can start cleaning. So the first few things that we want to look at um, are the air fuel correction, and air fuel learning. Those are gonna be our two main things we're gonna use to do the calibration side. So we have to check those. Um, your air fuel ratio sensor. It's important. It's usable in closed loop. Um, once you start getting the boost, it's not that great. So it's great to use for this situation. Uh, next thing we want to look at is your MAF voltage. This guy here, because that's what we're going to adjust on. Uh, we want to worry about your calculated load, your RPM, engine speed here. Uh, let's see, closed loop and open loop position, because we need to filter out everything open loop. Uh, good old throttle position. Even though we're not going to use that too much, we still log it just to be safe. And then, of course, your wideband gauge. So, um, your wideband air fuel gauge. I don't have it in here. It's I use the uh, AM Yugo, but it's unchecked. So just check that box, whatever yours is for here. Um, and that's something I can talk about later. And again, go for a drive. Do 30 minutes to an hour. It should be enough data. And when you do that, come back and we'll go through the log. All right. So. You've done your driving, you're back at your car now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the log that you pulled up. This is the log I did the other day. Um, there's a lot of stuff in it, just to ignore most of the information. We're only gonna cover what we need. So we have our MAF voltage here. This is the one that we care about. And we have our air fuel correction and our air fuel learning. So let's get this log filtered and ready so that uh, we can get the data out that we don't need so we can pull it into the other Excel sheet to do the data processing. So the first thing we want to do is, let's go ahead and apply a filter to the whole thing. So I just select this arrow to the side, we go to data, we go to filter. And that'll add a filter option to all these boxes here, or to all the, in this case, columns. So under your closed loop here, we just want to uncheck open, which will get rid of everything open loop. Uh, next thing is we want to remove anything closed loop that's under 0.5. So we'll go here, filters, and we'll say greater than because it says show rows where. So we'll just put 0 0.05. We don't want anything under that low low. That's something you can do for idle that you don't need. Alright, and the next thing we want to do is filter out the air fuel ratio um, outside of what we don't need. Um, there's two ways you can do it. Um, you can use the air fuel ratio that's built into the car here or you can use your wideband. Uh, personally, I've always used my wideband. Um, I don't think you'll have a problem using the stock built-in one, but I've always used the uh, my wideband just because it's a wideband, it covers a lot more, and I, depending on where the fuel is, it's a little more accurate. Uh, so you can use either one, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use the uh, my wideband here. And all we wanna do is number, filter. So we wanna show, uh, rows that are greater than, uh, if I think it was uh, greater than 13, and we want to do less than 16. So anything within 13 AFR and 16 AFR, that's fine. Those are things we want to keep filtered in. And from there, we're going to uh, jump over to the actual to the tool that's going to do the processing for us. Now this guy will be called a trim air tool. Um, this is like a custom one. I should say this custom. I've customized this one to my liking. So I've done a few different things um, in the background. So I'm not gonna share this one specifically just because it might not pertain to what you're doing. Uh, you can just Google search the trim error tool. You'll find it. Um, I believe it's on the ROM reader form. Uh, just be careful. I think there's like a trim error tool version four that uh, that's floating around. I think that's also another customized version. Um, I don't think it'll be a problem using it. That's the only one you can find because we're just sticking to a few different tabs here um, but just you'll go ahead and find it I think uh, there's an older version of it uh, let's see if I can help with that 
Yeah, it's your version 2.2 written by Bad Noodle. This is the main one that you want to look for. Or in this case, Open Loop Max Scaling Tool. <clears throat> so, once we get this guy set up, um, we want to go ahead and grab your results. The results, in this case, are just going to be your stock current MAF sensor. So, you'll just jump into Access Tuner. You'll start from the low voltage here, drag all the way across. It takes a few seconds to uh, grab the information. I just hit Control C, it works just fine. Go back to the trim tool. Select all these tablets, tab, these tab, or select all these tables, all the way across, and hit Control V. And I should paste it in because it's already um, organized the proper way. So you need to always bring in your current math scale into this so it knows how to read it. And you do that through, through this results tab. So now we need to get the data ready for the trim error tool. So we'll do that under the data tab. And what we're looking for is our math, our mass airflow voltage and our air fuel correction percentage. So that's a air fuel error percentage. So that's a pretty easy one. So we'll jump back to our actual log. And to the right side here, we're going to create two new tables. I'm going to open this up a little bit. We'll do our math voltage. And over here we'll do our air fuel trim percentage. It doesn't matter what you call it. This is just for the, for the video reference. So for math, to bring something over into this table, you just hit equals. You select the voltage and you hit enter and that will bring it over. If you select that first row, highlight that little square in the bottom right and double click, it'll bring everything down in that whole entire column. For the trim, again, pretty simple. We hit equals. We scroll over, we want our correction. And then to add um, the le learning, you hit shift plus. You click the next row and you hit enter. So your percentage becomes um, a collection or of the two, correction and error, and that becomes your percentage. So same thing, you select this guy, select a little square, double click, and it filters everything down. So once you get all that uh, filtered through, you're gonna select both rows and we're gonna bring them over into the uh, Tremere tool. And that's where, where it becomes a little bit tricky. It doesn't actually state it here, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's kind of a known thing with this specific uh, Excel file that under each um, column here for run two, three, four, five, it only supports about 4,000 uh, data plots or 4,000 rows. So when you're selecting, uh, let's see, when you're selecting here, what I kind of do is just select one row, come all the way down, and if you look as you select, as it starts to collect more information, this count it'll start to increase. So it says 349 now, but if I pull all the way down, keep selecting it, you'll see that number down there increase, 500, it jumps a lot. You wanna to get to 4,000. And of course it's gonna take a while. So you'll get to the 4,000 and then you'll just select to the right and now you'll see 8,000. So you can do 8,000 well. We'll just control C. We'll go back to trim error tool. And it's it, you gotta be careful when you paste this. So you gotta right click, choose special, and choose values. Otherwise it won't come over properly. <clears throat> so you're gonna go through the rest of your log here. You're gonna start at the next row, and you're gonna start copying again. And you're gonna pull all the information. Now, you'll probably get up to like, once you start filling these columns here, I usually get to about run six on a good half an hour, 45 minute drive. So you're gonna have a lot of data there. <clears throat> and once you get it filtered in, again, make sure your results tab has your current math scale. You're gonna go ahead and, this is where I suggest you run this on a fast computer or a computer that has enough power to run this. Um, at least have more than four gigs of RAM, if not eight gigs of RAM. I'm getting a little technical with the specs here. I've, I've had issues on my older computers where it run properly but make sure you hit run this on a proper computer that can handle it. So uh, once you have everything good to go, you're just gonna go ahead and hit the go button. And at this point, you can go 
you know, watch a TV show or an episode of your current show because for me it takes about a half an hour or so to actually run this process because it's going through each and every single table or row and grabbing the data and replotting it and then calculating it. So this macro is pretty, uh, pretty beastly. So once this is done, it's going to output the information um, that you need. I think I actually have one while well, it's running there in the background. All right, so that trim error tool is running in the background. Um, we're gonna have to take a look at this uh, this log of mine that's already been done. I didn't mean to start that process, but I did. So uh, what we're gonna look through is the results. Um, the easiest way, once the Excel sheet's done, pop over to your uh, your smoothing tab. And uh, in the smoothing tab, you're, it'll kind of plot here what your previous was versus your current. Uh, I find this thing to be a little mis misleading sometimes. As you can see, it's um, the updated kind of up, you know, threw up some bigger map numbers here and stuff. So I don't look at this too much, but it kind of just shows a difference of the smoothness um, and what it's supposed to be updated. This this one works a little bit better, uh, but we don't care too much about that. Um, the, the Excel sheet does a great job of the information. So the first thing you want to do is copy the original and then copy updated. And that will kind of plot and overlie everything correctly. If you look in the background, you can actually see, well, in this case, you can't see anything because this is the wrong one, but you'll see all your data plots being put um, input here in these different uh, tables to fill in each voltage. So some of these will have two or three because you didn't get much information, while some of these will have 50 or 100 because you, you were stuck in that math voltage area for a while during the cruising or something. So that's kind of how it does it. So what you do is go over to row two at the, the low end of the voltage, copy all the way up, hit control C, jump back over to access tuner, just copy here again, all the way from the front to the back, and you'll paste that information in. And that's basically what you do. Um, not much to it. Once you do it once or twice, it becomes a very simple process. Um, what other people do works. What this does works as well. Um, I find this to be a little bit better because it does a, a better average of the information. Um, after one, if not max two runs, my math scale is pretty much dialed in within 5%, which I'll be happy with. Um, after I've made some more of the changes to the car, I'll go back and redo this again. Um, at a certain point when I'm feeling things might be a little off or when I shift and I feel like the car jumps too much, um, I'll come in here and if you hit smooth three, it'll actually smooth out the table a little bit more. Uh, but that's after like run, run four and five if you really wanna get picky on it. So that's pretty much uh, how you do the map scaling. Um, you basically log your information. Oh, see, I'll run through it again real quickly. Log information, choose your actual uh, pieces that you log, copy your current math to the results tab here, number three, or in row three, uh, set up your current updated uh, or your current um, log with the filters that we talked about, and I'll put those in the description so they're there. Um, filter out the data we don't want, create your, uh, two, your two columns, pull the data over into the uh, trim error tool, into the data. Make sure you only do about 4,000 lines. Well, actually, yeah, here's run nine of mine. Hit go, grab a coffee, go get some food, let this thing run for a while. When you come back, go to the smoothing tab, hit copy original, copy updated, grab everything from row two, pop it back into your math scale voltage, and you're good. Um, so that's pretty much it. So we'll start going through, what I want to do is cover each one of these type of things that you would, uh, you would tune for in your car. So let me get this together and, and put out there for you guys and we'll get the next video created.